Hello Moon, it is a, such a pleasure to have you here today. Hello, yes, it's so it's so good to be here. By the way, you can call me Luna. I would I'd rather rather prefer that. Right, so it's Luna. Okay. Okay then Luna, um if you could ever so kindly just tell myself and the audience a little bit about yourself. Of course, darling. So I am Earth's only natural satellite and I was formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Now it takes about 27.3 days for me to orbit around the Earth. So, so that's 27.3 days, you say? So it's very similar to the woman's um, menstrual cycle, doesn't it? Um, is there any maybe correlation or linkages there? Mm, well, they are quite in sync, aren't they? I have seen and noticed that with a lot of a lot of women um, on Earth, they menstruate around the new moon and then they ovulate around the full moon. And really, if you do think about it, these cycles, um, they had to have been tracked in some shape or form many years ago. And after all, women are lunar by nature. Besides, darling, the very rise and the fall of the tides on Earth are caused by me. Ah, huh, it's very, very interesting um, that you mention that because you do rule Cancer. And Cancer is a water sign, isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. Right, so now I'm just gonna ask you some personal questions. Don't worry, they won't be so personal that, you know, emotions come, I'll try and keep them quite lighthearted. Venus was telling me um, that you, in fact, are the brightest object in the night sky. Well, yes, I am. However, I, I'm not bright on my own, you see, darling. I shine as bright as I do because my surface reflects the light of the sun. So when we do experience these new, these different cycles and these different phases, it really depends on how myself, okay, myself and the sun and the earth are all really working together. We are sort of like the divine trinity, um, so so to speak, and it, it's really quite quite marvelous. The sun is like the greater light, whereas I'm the lesser light. Truly, Hannah. Okay, the thing about me and the sun is that we are the center of it all. Our fairy seasons. Okay, the seasons between mid June to August, they are based within the middle of the fairy calendar year so we are at the fairy center point if you understand it's really as though me and the sun are the king and the queen even those who don't follow astrology they follow me i truly love it whenever people dance and they sing whenever um, i'm full People will have their gatherings though i must say i can get a bit too emotional for my own good Remarkable, remarkable. So how exactly then does that um, link to a person's sun sign and a moon sign? A person's sun sign really rules their, their basic drive. This very will to be which gives them a purpose. But then a person's moon sign for then myself, it rules their um, instinctive patterns as well as of course their emotional responses. The moon sign is the very form side of life because it shows how a person acts consciously as they move moment to moment throughout their lives, you see. And then that is naturally why it's related to the emotional responses because when you move and you live in a moment-to-moment -moment kind of um, reality, the emotional response becomes natural. It's almost um, subconsciously. And so the sun and I, we both create um, and we form the very ego structure of a person. Wow, hi, completely insightful, Luna. Thank you. You know, on that note, what I would really like to actually ask you it's just to, overall, um, 
let us know your fairy function. What is your fairy function? Well, my job, sweetheart, um, my job is to provide then the emotional and the physical support. With me, I can truly create um, a very rather nurturing environment. So, of course, because of this, I do represent the mothering um, that a person receives whenever they're younger, as well as the, the caretaking they receive later within their adult life. I'm really the caretaker, you see. That's kind of who I am. <laughs> hmm, what a very thoughtful and caring role then that you play, Luna. And then can you just uh, elaborate then for me a bit more on um, cancer? So obviously with you, of course, ruling the sign of cancer. Of course, well, seeing as I am really linked to the, the instinctive patterns, it, it could be suggested that um, Cancer, the sign of Cancer, is probably the most instinctive of the signs. Not only that, but I think that Cancer Moon people, they are just such sentimental and sweet, loving, caring people um, by nature. Um, underneath that hard shell that they have, the shell is just really their armour, you see. And when they come out of that shell and you see just how loving they are, then I think other people will appreciate that about them. They are just so easily affected um, by the feelings that not only they have within them, but around them. So you'll find that they are very receptive to the moods um, of other people. Whenever they are with happy company, they bloom but whenever they are with more um, depressed like people, um, they can bring them down. Now I also, um, you are then in detriment within the sign of Capricorn, of course, because you're opposite signs. So why exactly is that? If you could just explain then to myself and the audience why that is. Well, darling, if we really water, <laughs> water, what are this down to the very finer details of Capricorn. Capricorn is the final earth sign within the zodiac and is also the final cardinal sign within the zodiac. So these people, they have these very strong ambitions and they have this almost thirst for power. With Capricorn, of course, ruling this, this 10th house of social status and authority. You see, I come along, okay? I. I come along into this sign of Capricorn. And so for Capricorn moon people, the very security of the subconscious lies within authority. As a way for them to remain powerful, they might actually harden themselves um, in a shell of ambition, completely avoiding then how they, they truly feel inside. There is a fear, you see, for them. This slight fear that if they let go of their emotions, of their security, the structure that they want so badly, the fear that they let go of that, then they may float away and not reach the highest potential that they so long to reach. Right, right, okay. Now, what I would also like to touch on, of course, would be your exaltation and your fall, Lena. Now, of course, you are exalted within the sign of Taurus. So please, if you could just explain what that means for the audience as well. Yes, that's very correct. I am exalted within the beautiful sign of Taurus. It's as if me and, um, and Venus then, we are, we're coming together and we're joining forces. We are two feminine bodies after all. We are also the two brightest within the night sky, as you well know, Hannah. Quite artistic and affectionate bodies. And so, darling, a Taurus moon, they will operate in, in a very Venus type way. Taurus moon people have much devotion and persistence and they have such charm, very beauty loving. They just have such need for security. They really do. Much, much like the Cancer Moon people. You'll even notice that Taurus and Cancer in general, these, these two signs, they do share a few things or two in common. Loyal people and attractive personalities overall for the Taurus Moons. Perfect. Makes, does make a lot of sense with the Taurus and Cancer people. I can see how that works very well. Now, of course, if you could just elaborate on the full... Within Scorpio. 
yes, uh, falling within the sign of Scorpio. Now, this is where it's quite similar because I was saying about the moon in Capricorn in this whole sense of control and power and that is something that Scorpio and, and Capricorn have in common is this control and power as well as fear, you see. This is then myself with Mars and Pluto coming together here. Two of these very masculine energies coming with me and I almost feel outnumbered here, honey. It's quite overwhelming. It's a very push and pull, uh, internal struggle. This is because my natural, okay, my very natural emotional function is just not expressed correctly here. Is it leads these people to having the most intense, deep emotions that you can possibly ever imagine. They're just so deep in there. This then leads to these extremist temperaments that they can have and a highly, highly sensitive, highly, highly sensitive people, though they will not let on, you see, that they are sensitive because they don't want people to see that in them, but they are very stuck within their emotions. And the reason, of course, why this is, as I kind of was saying, is because of the fear, the fear of them losing control. But when they lose it, they then don't even know why they lost it in the first place, because it's really very, very deep down inside them. Oh, I saw Scorpio moons just really, really is difficult for them. You know, my heart just aches. Oh. Oh no, are you are you okay? Here, I have I have um I have some tissues here if you really if you really need any, Luna. I'm so sorry. I don't I don't mean to um cause you any distress. No, no, I'm okay. I'm okay, I'll continue. Just have to really learn how to control that sometimes. Only if you're sure now and if you're if you're ready to move on with this interview then just just let me know, okay? Yeah, so I can continue. I'm okay. Thank you though so much. You're very, very thoughtful, Hannah. Okay, okay. Now just a couple more questions and um, that will be us then. Luna, thank you so much for um, just being here. How does one truly own their moon energy effectively? Okay, so in order for people to know that they're using their moon effectively, they will feel nourished and they will have a secure sense of belongingness within the fairy selves. Very well, very well. Now the very last question for you, Luna. So if you could just please tell me, what does your fairy placement in a person's birth chart truly represent? Well, Hannah, it all ultimately boils down to my fairy placement reflects to the person the true self identity. Quick and short and to the point there, Luna. Thank you. Thank you so much for just being here again, Luna. It was really an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you kindly, Hannah, for having me. Okay guys, so that concludes my video on the interview with the moon. I know this video was a little bit more serious, a bit more formal than the other ones, but that's how I kind of think the moon would be if she were a person, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, thank you guys. Um, thank you to my current subscribers for subscribing to my channel. And if you watched this video, thank you also. Furthermore, if you would like to see more videos from me, because I will be coming um, with the sun video next, so that's gonna be quite exciting. Yeah, if you wanna see more videos from me, then click the subscribe button, and I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye!